Dr. Jacob has a patent pending for modified versions of the Care segments. None of the other authors have any financial interests. Keratoconus, a disease considered a bane by both patients and ophthalmologists alike for many years, has now seen rapid progress in both diagnosis as well as treatment. Three key surgical advancements that have completely changed the management of keratoconus are collagen cross-linking or CXL, intrastromal corneal ring segments or ICRS and deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty or DAL. ICRS has been combined with CXL to improve the quality of vision and corneal biomechanics. But do synthetic ICRS have any problems? Yes, and these include segment migration, overriding of segments, stromal thinning, corneal melt and necrosis, exposure and extrusion of the segments, etc. Corneal melting can occur especially with shallow implantation or with constant eye rubbing. Artificial segments can also be associated with the risk of infectious keratitis that can progress to become sight-threatening. Other reported complications include corneal neovascularization, mild channel deposits, focal edema and corneal haze. We wondered how we could combine the beneficial effects of ICRS on topography and biomechanics while avoiding the possible complications associated with implanting synthetic material within the cornea. And we wondered why we could not implant corneal stroma itself within the patient's stroma. This would negate all complications associated with synthetic material, while the spacer effect would give beneficial effects of synthetic ICRS. We started by manually dissecting the corneal segments. Though difficult initially, Soon, with experience, we were able to obtain uniform segments. Being less rigid than PMMA, implantation would be difficult. And we solved this by placing the incision on the flat axis, enabling us to slide the care segments in on either side. We would also combine this with cross-linking in all patients one case, however, developed neovascularization as the incision overlay the segment and unfortunately also the limbus. So, our next challenge was to enable insertion on either side of the incision. This was solved by tying the care segment to an intact segment and using this as a pull-through instrument to either side of the incision. This also allowed us implantation similar to intacts with the incision being placed on the steep axis. We also soon realized that deep implantation of the CARS segments at 75-80% to 80 corneal depth similar to synthetic ICRS resulted in an increase in the posterior corneal curvature. This increased posterior corneal curvature decreased sphere. There was, however, limited effect on regularization of the keratometric map. Being composed of corneal tissue, superficial implantation would not be associated with the dangers of corneal melt and would also regularize the corneal surface. However, the effect on posterior corneal curvature would be lost. We therefore decided to implant midway at a depth of 50%. Though a mid-depth segment would have a lesser effect than a deeper segment on posterior corneal curvature, it would still reduce the myopic power. The total myopic power would be decreased secondary to an increased posterior corneal and decreased anterior corneal curvature. We would also obtain better optical quality secondary to regularization of the anterior corneal surface. It was time to put this hypothesis to the test. We created femtosecond dissected channels at 50% depth and implanted the care segments, following it up with cross-linking. The first post-operative day, Eureka! 
but would this effect last over time? We regularly evaluated all patients and to our delight at 11 months post-operative visit the results spoke for themselves. Improvements were noted in uncorrected and best corrected visual acuity as well as in the quality of vision. The orb scan also showed improvement in all patients. Overall, our results were very encouraging and on par with those obtained after synthetic ICRS. All segments showed good biocompatibility and integration into the patient's cornea. We were able to perform cares with cross-linking safely, even in corneas that were steep but had sufficient pachymetry, though previously we would have done a DALC because of the risks of cross-linking such steep corneas. This was because the initial flattening created by the care segments made the corneas suitable for safe subsequent cross-linking. This allowed us to avoid corneal grafting in these young patients. Thin corneas were also safely treated using cares combined with a technique that we have previously described. Contact lens assisted collagen cross-linking with which we have more than three years of expertise now. We also wanted to make segment creation more uniform and predictable. The two solutions for this were to create the segment using the femtosecond laser. However, a pre-programmed plan is necessary for this and is an option for future development. The other solution was to custom make a trefine with two blades which would allow concentric cuts and allow punching the segment endothelium up as is done for keratoplasty. Microscopic images of the care segments showed regular, even cuts and structurally unaltered normal corneal tissue. We used a standardized nomogram for all patients and found encouraging results. The future would include further customization with respect to thickness and optic zone, development of nomograms as available for synthetic ICRS, femtosecond dissected cross-linked care segments, as well as eye bank involvement for supply of these segments. To conclude, care segments were effective, safe, stable, simple, economic, reversible, and adjustable with good biocompatibility and integration into the patient's cornea. All patients had improvement in uncorrected and best corrected visual acuity.